Hello, everyone, and welcome to Story Path Showcase, Trinity Continuum Anima. This is session three. Uh, I am Travis Legg. I will be your story guide, and my pronouns are he, him, or they, them. Doesn't matter. Uh, both are equally fine. Uh, before we dive in too deeply into uh, the things that require the sharing with y'all, I do want to remind you that the reason we are here is because Trinity Continuum Anima is currently on Kickstarter. And uh, as of earlier today, when I looked, we had just blew past another stretch goal. Yep, we got nine days left. We're at 46,000. Uh, and I think that makes the sixth stretch goal unlocked. Oh no, we have some people switched. I'll fix that while I throw the Kickstarter link up there in the chat. So if you need to, you know, go get the Kickstarter. We can run over and do that real quick. Um, in the interim, however, uh, the other thing I wanted to remind you or let you know about is that tomorrow night, uh, myself and some of the uh, other fine streamers on this channel, Chaz included, are going to be getting together uh, to have a talk about running StoryPath. So if you're interested in, to, in some insights from those of us who uh, run this on a regular basis, uh, tune in. We'll be having a Q&A. It'll be a fun time. Um, I got everything all backwards here. Hold on. There we go. Now we're The fixed. curveball for today's session is we're going to start playing each other's characters. Right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly that. Um, so before we dive too far into the story and the recap, uh, we have our tweaks time. Did any of you have any tweaks that you needed or would like to make? Uh, you may change short-term aspirations. Uh, you may move either a skill dot or an attribute dot if you so choose. Um, any tweaks need to be made? Um, I had to add some aspirations because I achieved two short terms last session. Beautiful. What did you um, choose for your new? So I, I want to, one short term is to move Cypher to, an, to another location. Okay. And another one is to get in a fight IRL. Also, okay. I feel inspired by the doctor. Ah. Beautiful. All right. Uh, did the doctor have any changes, any new aspirations, anything along the way? Uh, I should have a new aspiration, a short-term one, but I am blanking at the moment, so I apologize. Sure, do you have um, I also... Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Nope. I was going to ask if there was anything in particular that uh, you wanted to be able to accomplish. Anything that struck you as might be fun to do, Kiri? Hmm. Breaking ribs was fun the last time. I'm probably down to try that again. What did I miss? <laughs> The titty kick. <laughs> Dr. Titty Kicker. There, that is true. Yes, there was some titty kicking, in fact. Um, Her so, words, yeah, not mine. If, if break, someone's, uh, break someone's ribs is fine, that's a perfectly okay. acceptable uh, aspiration. Oh, wonderful. Cool. Thank you. Excellent. Any tweaks? Like that movement? Excellent. And then what about for, uh, for Mako? What do we got? Any... Uh, Aspiration changes or dot movements? Yeah, I need to add an aspiration. So I think I'm going to try to play some patty cake with some of the orphans, uh, considering that two of the orphans are just like bleeding somewhere. We're, we're going to do some patty cake with them. Excellent. I, I love it. Uh, and any dot tweaks? Uh, dots should be fine. Excellent. And the last thing I want to do before we dive too far into uh, recaps is also let you know um, that Trinity Continuum Assassins is up for pre-order at Drive Through RPG as well, uh, which is uh, modern setting. It, it runs sort of parallel to Core and yeah. looks at sort of the seedy underbelly of the Core Trinity Continuum setting. Um, and if you pre-order there on Drive Through, you'll be getting advanced access to the PDF 
as it rolls out over the course of the pre-order, just as you would if we were doing a Kickstarter. So that's pretty exciting. Um, so yeah, go check that out if you've not yet done so. All right. So when last we met, uh, you all had gathered together to uh, go on the... Yes? Um, I had XP expenditures as oh. well. By all means, what I bought, did you spend your I bought I bought some I bought some edges because I needed some more. I had some edges I wanted to buy a character creation. I couldn't afford them then. Um, so I picked up Skilled Liar finally. Nice. And uh Safe House. Now the way that Safe House reads, it looks like um it's more like an impromptu thing. So I was wondering whether I could have like an actual safe house, like my own, as opposed to like a making a call and getting a safe house kind of thing. I mean, yes, uh, absolutely, but like you can kind of do both because you're filthy rich. Sure. Uh, yeah. This primarily, it's it's more um, an extension of some of my other. I don't. I don't want to spoil it too hard. I just want to make sure that I can do it. Yeah. Totally fine. Okay. Cool. All right. I'm done. All right. Rock and roll. Anybody else have anything else? XP expenditures? Any other questions? Rock and roll. So, uh, last session, you gathered together to go raid uh, on uh, the spider, the um, uh, stalker in the lair of the 8,000 eyes. Uh, as you logged in to go to the raid, um, Peaches was immediately attacked by a vendor who was behaving strangely, and that attack didn't do any damage to his anima, but instead uh, created a flag for a cheat that has basically locked Peaches out of his Terra Search account entirely. Travesty. So Peaches was forced to wait on the sidelines while the rest of you went into the raid, uh, where you did successfully defeat the spider, get the clue that you uh, believe will be leading you uh, to the next location, uh, which I believe you had sorted out and had uh, figured out that that was probably the Temple of the Spear, which is underwater. Now, the good news is that there were three helms dropped um, of water breathing. The bad news is that uh, Peaches didn't get one of them um, because Peaches was locked out. So... In order to do this quest, you're going to have to figure out a way for Peaches to breathe water once you figure out a way for Peaches to get back online. One thing at a time. You logged out uh, and started working on some of your Cascade side uh, initiatives, particularly uh, Anthony was pulling together a press conference to announce a new plan uh, for revitalizing a certain endowment. Is that also accurate? Mm -hmm. And right at the beginning of that press conference, uh, you were interrupted by a hacker. Also correct? I mean, interrupted is one way to put it. Another could be, they've fallen into my trap. And what they were saying uh, was, people of Cascade, you are being lied to. The FSA and Fulgatech don't want you to know that people are going missing. People might be dying. We're gathering information and we'll have more soon. But for now, ask yourselves, where are they? And a list of Terra Surge handles starts scrolling on the screen. Uh, it's about 20 streamers long. Um, but very specifically, you notice that it includes Snow Bunny, but also includes Cypher. I have, I have a system question. I have a system answer. How does, uh, what is it called? Creative editing? Uh, work? Dramatic editing? Yeah, yeah, that's the one. So it, you spend inspiration to affect the flow of events. Now, okay. um, it kind of depends on how big of a change you would like to make mm -hmm. to the scene. Um, well, let me tell you what I'd like to do. You can tell me whether or not this is uh, in line with what, I, what it would do. Sure. I guess. Uh, so what I would like to do is, um, knowing that I was making myself a target for someone to some extent, I was either going to get 
I was figuring it was either going to be a, um, a physical attack or a media attack. It was going to be one of those two things. Um, since it looks like they were going with some sort of media attack, uh, what I would like to do um, is arrange for a track and SWAT. And what's the name of that, um, that arm of, uh, is it, is it an arm of Aeon that's like special ops or is that a separate agency? Are you talking about Proteus? Is that, is that, no, the, the, what are they? I'm sorry. I, I don't remember the name of the actual allegiance. Um, it was one of the organizations was. There's Optech Security, there, or uh, I'm sorry, IX Security. Is that what you're talking about? Was it IX? Are they the, are they the. They're like, are they the mercenary types? Of... Okay. Um, so my intent was to, um, when the, when the broadcast breaks through, I was hoping I'd be able to alert the, uh, both my team and, um, initiate a bounty on the broadcaster, okay. um, looking for a location and routing that location to the authorities, essentially swatting them sure um at, the, at an opportune moment so that was kind of like my I, would, I will need you to spend two inspiration done and then i will need you to roll a pool of seven dice okay and the difficulty is two the complication is five do you all mind if i borrow some momentum from this? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like i don't know Four. <laughs> any 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 thoughts? Yeah, let's do it. Go for it. All right. Okay, so yeah, you can add dice equal to the momentum spent to your pool. Okay. Just a second. So you had seven, so I roll eleven dice, right? Yep. And the difficulty is eight, and then my target or my target is eight, difficulty target, is two. Difficulty is two. You have five complications to resolve. Five complications. All right. So I got. Oh, wait. Oh, there's another 10. Uh... Come on, come on, come on. So I have six. All right. Uh, so you can resolve four of the five complications. I will resolve four of the five complications and I'll deal with the one. You'll deal with uh, it all later. Um, yeah. So. Uh, they start the back trace and they start, you know. Yep, it's Operation it'll, STFU. It'll be a while before you know how that went. Mm -hmm. um, and the broadcast wasn't very long. It was long enough for them to say what they said, throw the list of names up, cycle it twice, and then they fade back out. Okay. The crowd um, is, um, you know, there's a lot of a lot of crowd walla happening at this point. People are, are. Uh, nonplussed and stressed so um, now i would like to spend another inspiration okay. um for contain the calamity uh which says let's see um just a certain way of what is it da, 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 da. just a certain way of helping others cope with stress during an emergency she's a calming presence giving aid and strength to those who need it Shows how to de-escalate the roughest situations and use just the right words and tones to make everyone take a second and breathe. Spend a point of inspiration to activate this gift for the scene. So long as your character can communicate uninterrupted, she may remove the terrorized, intimidated, or taunted atmosphere from any or all persons in the scene. People attempting to shout over her and continue a hostile atmosphere uh, while she talks have a complication equal to her reflective facet to do so. Excellent. So I will activate... Um, contain the calamity and I will start talking. Please do. You know, that was an awful lot of words to say absolutely nothing of substance. Um, advancing society has never and will never be without its challenges. And it's up to us to decide whether we want to meet those challenges with reason and combat them with ingenuity and with science and with careful investigation or cave to fear mongers and would be cyber terrorists that would just as soon see our world collapse as the most nihilist, nihilistic of aberrants would have. Um, historically, the material benefits of research and engineering has disproportionately benefited those privileged enough to be wealthy, influential, or born into power. Um, do you think that these, and I'll point over my shoulder at the, the monitor, 
These would-be activists have the desire to lift up the impoverished and underprivileged, or are they purely interested in tearing down the institutions or, and, and towers that they view as, say, the capitalist weapons of oppression? Um, interrupt my broadcast when you have a plan. And I'm, looking, I'm, I'm like looking at the camera at this point. Uh, until then, stay hydrated, touch some grass, and find ways to enrich and educate yourself. The adults are talking. Well, as I was saying, last year, the Eon Covenant, specifically benefactors loyal to the initiatives upheld by Project Neptune, raised $65 billion from private sector supporters. While this is no mean sum, still overall, those requiring ongoing psychological or medical treatment, uh, or basic needs, and education until adulthood receive less than 3% of all charitable giving. Uh, in a world where our minds are, the, are our tools of our prosperity, our productivity, and tragically, with the continuing advancements and adoption of glass technology, our potential undoing, we have much work to do, and the Cascade Medical Association only has so many resources. We need to develop our fundraising skills and capacity right across the sector, and to do this, we need to learn from those who do it best. So today, I am announcing a brand new match funding scheme designed to help different types of initiatives within the realms of neurological and psychological research, development, and treatment. Uh, it's a fund that will be deployed in a range of ways to allow medical organizations and our vital community care associations, large and small, local or global, to access a scheme that suits them. Firstly, it'll help smaller organizations like the Nadir Medical Facility in uh, Point, uh, what's the name of, I'm sorry, what's the name of the oh, Point? Uh... Point, point gray, point no. No, point, point something. Um, do, 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 point. Yes, I know what you're talking about. Uh... <laughs> like throttled. Anyway, and yes, the nearby orphanages, uh, and the nearby orphanages, some of which do not even have the basic fundraising capacity to develop or even finance their ability to identify and cultivate donors. Uh, finally, it'll help our established institutions, offering them a chance to take the next big step for them, namely to set up world-class and far-reaching endowment funds. Um, this is not a short-term venture. It's not something that will make a huge difference to finance in the next few challenging years. But if it took the Met in old New York over a century to build up its multi-billion dollar endowment, should we not start our endowment century now? As the Chinese would say, the journey of a thousand miles starts with one step. And in a hundred years time, I want people to look back and say that the multi-trillion dollar endowments owned by our participating neurological and psychological treatment organizations and put their first roots in the ground back in 2084, a plan that will form a wider global strategy on giving and that we will publish in the spring, uh, a plan that proves that even though the very nature of philanthropy puts the onus on the private sector, the FSA and Fulger Tech are not prepared to just sit back and do nothing to make it happen. From encouraging legacy giving to promoting the long-term development of endowments, from harnessing the ever-expansive library of opnet and glass technologies, and cultivating overseas donors. From getting better at saying thanks, to offering help to the smallest research and development organizations, as well as the biggest, those in Cascade, as well as those further away. So I'm under no disillusions. This will take a lot of time. And it is a particularly challenging time for the medical sector. But the sooner we start, the sooner we'll get there. And the sooner treatment organizations in this world to be able to benefit fully from a society that truly believes in what one Winston Churchill articulated at another time of austerity. We make a living by what we get. We make a life by what we give. Hope, sacrifice, and unity. Thank you. Woohoo! Um, I need you to go ahead and give me a, I would say that's probably persuasion, right? Uh, I will take presence and persuasion, yeah. All right. Um, you're going to, you've negated the complication with your gift. Um, the, the neighborhood you were speaking about was Point Taylor, by the way. Point Taylor, thank you. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, I guess just give me a, a straight up roll, please. Okay. Uh, there, yep, no. Nope. Seven? Seven ones don't, ones, ones don't cancel, right? Correct. Oh, wait, no, that was, ooh, for some reason that's, okay, so it's three plus two, sorry. So five. Okay. 
Still not bad. Um, it's quite a bit. You receive a standing ovation. Uh, people start asking you some questions about how you intend to uh, finance this. And what As I said, we'll be releasing a we'll be releasing a plan in the spring. But in the meantime, um, we have a number of ambassadors we're working with from the area that are particularly invested and well rooted, uh, who will be taking under advisement. Do you have any comments for uh, Fulger Tech about the missing streamers? Um, my concerns regarding Fulgertech and the FSA right now are more in line with their capacity to uh, contribute to the efforts in uh, Point Taylor. A couple more people ask you questions. Um, pretty much same stuff uh, over and over again, you know. Where is this money going to come from? What are we going to do about crime? Point Taylor as a whole. Um, um. I remind them that uh, the Exodus Memorial Endowment Fund is uh, both a lucrative and philanthropic venture that is prepared to do the fund matching for all of the donors. So leave it up to me to determine how to come up with the money that uh, contributors choose to contribute. So if they want to know how I'm going to come up with it, they should come up with their share first. All right. Fair enough. Any other things that you want to address while you've got the crowd? Mm -mm. No, I, I will continue to deflect regarding the missing streamers. And um, I will remind people that, you know, this is a time of austerity. Glass technology is new. There are always going to be dangers and concerns. There are always going to be things that we have to weather. Um, but that fear is not the path forward. Um, fear of the, uh, the underdeveloped and underprivileged are definitely not an answer to this um, and that it's in our best interests as citizens of Cascade to continue to invest and give people a path to citizenship um, as opposed to finding ways to wall them out. Very good. Excellent. Uh, you're fairly certain that this is going to be uh, the, the talk of the various news shows for the rest of at least the day. Uh, perhaps the week, depending on who does or does not go missing. Um, Paris is just sort of like smiling. It's like she's got on like the big, you know, you can tell that from the front row, uh, she looks like she's having a grand old time, but she's staring daggers through you. Okay. Um, no more questions. Uh, feel free to, um, we'll definitely be following this up. Uh, deeper in the spring and expect updates as they uh, as as they arise. Thank you. And I will excuse myself and head back to the group who was waiting uh, in the backstage green room, right? Yes. Um, and I'll make sure I make eye contact with Paris and kind of nod as I leave. He follows you. Go backstage. Uh, Loosen my collar. I assume the two of you were watching that from backstage, or were you doing something else? Yeah, I was bored not to watch it. No. <laughs> right on. Uh, so they come in, and Paris says, tw they had 20 names up there. We're trying to figure out who, uh, who broadcasted that message. I'm wondering whether it was a warning, or whether they had something to do with their disappearance. It all seems a little too convenient to me. I guess, but I mean, like, why would the people who were involved with the disappearances broadcast a list of who they stole? Without, like, ask, yourself that ask yourself that question again. If they want to stir up trouble, if they want to stir up malcontent, if they want to cause a panic, I would. Um, they're not trying to leverage these people's, you know, presence. They're leveraging the scenario. It could, it could very well be a warning. Maybe it was the gray wolves, you know, getting on the bullhorn. I can't see one or the other. Fact is, we don't know where all these people are, but we know where at least one of them is. And she's not safe. All right. So what's our next move? Doctor, how do you, uh, how confident are you that we could safely move Cypher? Uh, uh, 
so confident, like off the charts. Yeah. Do you think that you could keep her stable in transit? Oh yeah, for sure. It's <laughs> good enough for me. Um, and I think. If and what about she's Snowbunny? <clears throat> I mean, you had, you, I thought you had her committed. Or <laughs> I mean, maybe to the ER, but she, she's cool. Um, no, she's, she's had her she's glass a, ripped out, that's all. <laughs> yeah. So she's at, the, she's at the Barnaby facility. Um, so we have two separate, we have two separate patients at two separate clinics that you would have to, to move. If you want to uh, move Snow Bunny as well, we could, but we'd have to split our efforts. Mm. It seems like Cypher is key to this, though, considering she's the one who put us on this hunt. What I'm thinking is we move her, and as much as I know Paris wants to put the, I guess, the, the word out or, or interact with some other people, I think that if Cypher does wake up, that it might be good for her to have a friend nearby. I'll look at Paris. So you want me to babysit? You were very concerned about the safety of your friend. I'm giving you an opportunity to take a personal interest in it. Okay, that's fine. Um, I mean, meanwhile, you run around and finish up the, the quest. Have we got a better idea? Uh, it's cool, but I need, I need your word. I need, I need something better than your word. I need assurance that you're not going to cut me out when you find out what the hell this is about. Define cut you out. Those are some shifty eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I need to know what my friend got hospitalized over. Tell you I what. to know what's it on that package. If Cypher wants you to know, she can tell you. Okay, but Cypher's not asking me to sit on the sidelines and, uh, you know, prop up a chair in a waiting room while he goes and runs around in Terra Surge and handles this. All right, sure. As long as the information never makes it to your influence feed. You think I'm going to just, do, like, endanger everyone by... Obviously, unless unless it's something that like, you know, hey, my dying wish is get this out or something, you know. Okay, that's good enough for me then. Great, we have a plan. Um, this doesn't work unless we get Peaches back online, though. She says, "Well, you got two ways you can do that." What are the chances that there is in, so we'd have to find an actual meat body administrator, right? Like an automated narrator is not going to, be able to get this done. Right. No, you have to either get a hold of uh, Expanse Interactive's Cascade office or the other alternative is re jail break his glass, which also carries the risk of if you run across a narrator in game and they, and they spot him launched Were you what are the may go yeah go ahead um, my question is which one is the easiest one that costs the least amount takes the least time and has the best chance of working all I mean, of those things neither one of those has all of those things Damn the it. easiest one is probably um and the one that has the most chance of working is getting a hold of Expanse. Um, that's going to be because you did get it's a false it's a false flag. You will get reinstated. It won't be a delay once you're able to get the ticket filed, most likely, um, and you'll be fine, good to go. The fastest is by far to re jailbreak your glass. Okay. Maybe we, a risk or two with it. 
maybe we, we reach out um, and we wait 120 seconds to see if we can fix it. I, I have a thought. What are the chances <laughs> that one of the expanse administrators? Okay. So other than the West Point gray compound, which is like my personal place in Victory Bay is where the drinking mall cafe casino is. Um, so what are the chances that we know anything about like, you know how, when you, when you join like a casino, you have like your membership card. Sure. Um, does any of that, could I get any insight into where these people might work and whether any of them work for expanse and might happen to be gambling or are on break or off duty or leisurely right now? I mean, like you're talking about, if you're trying to talk about like accessing specific personnel records and whatnot. No, it's more like, are any, if do I think that there are any potential administrators, and I was kind of a long shot, are there any administrators that might be in, at the Victory Bay compound, either shopping, drinking, eating, or gambling? Well, uh, it's not impossible. Um, you can... I guess. So what's your access to that through specifically? The Victory Bay compound. I own it. Right. So that's through your. Through uh, Exodus. So that's like. Wealth, my, basically. Yeah. All yeah. right. Um, so what you would do then is. Uh, you or, far, make, or far reaching influence, whatever you want to call it. I don't yeah, know which you, one it would you, be. You'd make your uh, wealth roll. Okay. Um, pair that with uh, appropriate uh, attribute. Okay. Um, you would have a complication of four because that's something pretty specific you're looking for. Yeah. Um, and uh, but you have scale because of your because you're loaded. Yeah. Okay. So that will eliminate two of those complications. Well, it gives you two. So I'll just either way. I'll put the I'll put the feelers out. Like I'll reach out to management and just get a list of people that are basically in the area, like if there are RFIDs just kind of floating around uh, to see if there's any, uh, what, which company is it? Um, Expanse Interactive? Expanse Interactive personnel in in the area. Sure. Uh, give it a roll. You said it's wealth plus a, a stat? Tri- yeah, whatever. So I would say this is probably cunning. Okay. Okay, so and how does it how does enhancement work? It just adds to the thing, right? Um, yeah. So your enhancement acts as additional successes. So you have to overcome four complications. As long as you get one material success, you already have two enhancement because of the scale. Okay. Being loaded. So I got four. Okay. Four, including that uh, enhancement from the scale. That's with the enhancement. Okay, yeah, so that's just literally just enough. Yeah, so you find uh, there's somebody who's there uh, just getting dinner uh, that is a um, customer service rep. Okay. So we've got, we've got a CSR at a cafe. Otherwise, we should reach out to Expanse. Um, it's up to you, Peaches. We can do this either way. Yeah, let's reach out to CSR rep. That's less than 120 seconds, right? Oh, the, do we know what? How long have they been there for food? Oh, they got there 20 minutes ago. They might not have started eating yet. It's quite possible. Um, sure. I'm going to, uh, I guess, call the table. Okay. Um, they take like a phone out on a tray for him. <laughs> Hello? Hello there. Is this, uh, what is their name? Uh, Jones. Mike is this, Jones. Uh, is this Mike Jones? Mike Jones. Is this, is this Mike Jones? <laughs> uh, yeah. Can I help you? Mike Jones. Hello. Um, Am I being punked or something? 
No, 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 not, not in the least. So uh, I am actually the uh, owner of the establishment that you're frequenting and uh, that you're visiting right now. And um, I was hoping to make you uh, an offer regarding your visit and a few future visits in exchange for a little bit of uh, professional courtesy, if you have a moment. Sure. I mean, my food's like five minutes, they said. So what can I do for you? You can wait. It's free. Um, so a friend of mine has a bit of a problem in that they were, uh, mistakenly flagged for exploiting in Terra Surge and were in a bit of a bind and could really use getting their account reinstated. Is that something that you or your fellows can facilitate for us? Um, Peaches is on this call, by the way, but I don't know whether or not Peaches is going to say anything. <laughs> um, sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What's the username and login? Uh, look at peaches. Am I supposed to give my login? This feels kind of scary. Uh, username is peaches. That's a three and then a four for the A. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. All right. Um, uh, login is uh, the best fruit to eat. Once again, three and then four for in the eat part. Okay. Um, go ahead and give me. Uh, let's do um, a persuasion roll from uh, Anthony. You can use whatever uh, attribute you would like, and you need to come. You need to overcome a mystery complication of two. I use Fairweather friend for this. Yeah. Ah, <gasps> I forgot about those things. So this be is a new scene, him. right? This is a new inspiration. This is a new scene, right? So I got an inspiration back, at least one. Yep. Okay. Whew. All right. Cool. Um, you build a bond. How does Fairweather? How does Feather Friend work? Uh, you build you a, know, a temporary bond. I believe it's spend an inspiration to build a bond of friendship quickly over the course of a scene, rather than requiring a dramatic milestone. <laughs> but you must spend it quickly and reap twice its benefits. Cool. All right. That sounds exactly like what I need. All right. Um, so, so we're gonna go. You said persuasion plus. This will probably be manipulation, I think. Okay. And you would have an enhancement of two if you're going to uh, burn that, build and burn that bond. Oh. Yeah, I don't care about Mike Jones. <laughs> I mean, I care Mike about Mike Jones. Jones enough to care right now. Mike Jones. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not going to, I can't not think about it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> damn it, Travis. <laughs> You said enhance, so mis miscellaneous complication of two, and I have an enhancement of two, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I can make the same mistake I did last time. So four plus, so it's just four. All right. Yeah. Oh, All four right. plus two. So they, six uh, minus the, the two or whatever. You pay off the complication. Okay. Um, they say, yeah, uh, should be able to log back in. You should be good to go. Uh, I also went ahead and uh, threw in a, a gold piece for your difficulty. Yes, and thank you, Mike Jones. Feel free to enjoy the VIP facilities for the next month, free of charge. We do appreciate your assistance in this matter. Sure, no problem. Thank you, Mr. Jones. I hang up on him. Please don't. Oh, oh. <laughs> 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 that's that speech you gave in front of work was a really good speech. Could you, teach, could you teach all the uh, the children at the orphanage how to speak? Because they're not good at it yet. I mean, they don't. They, could you be their, like, mentor? We'll talk about it later. We have more important things to do. I just want to. I'm going to hug Peaches. That's Let's it. Moving. I, feel, I feel this is the best day of my life. <laughs> um. So let's uh, let's go get ourselves a uh, an unconscious streamer. Hey, let's do it. All right, so you're gonna go pick her up and move her. Yeah. And you're moving her to where? So I'm actually going to move her to um, the. I just had this up. To my boat. 
Okay. Are you also collecting um, Snow Bunny? Uh, yeah, well, we're, we're closer to Barnaby, so we can grab both of them. I saw Kiri shaking her head. Oh, sorry. I thought you talked about splitting our efforts and stuff like that, so I wasn't sure well, we only... just wanted to focus on... Well, I don't want to split the party again. Last time we did, someone got attacked. So that wasn't uh, a big since, deal, though. <laughs> since we have, since we have the entourage vehicle, we're just mm -hmm. going to pile everybody in. Uh, there's enough space for everybody plus two unconscious folk. All right, I'm down. All right, uh, you pile everyone together, get them on the boat. Probably takes you about an hour or so. Um, you receive word back that. Uh, there was a raid on the address that was um, that that stuff was tracked back to. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, they weren't able to get anyone into custody. Most of the people present escaped. One was killed. Um, also, two uh, guards for uh, IX were also killed. Fire I'm not sharing that information. <laughs> I'm definitely not sharing that information. Uh, um, you, it's tragic, but... Is anyone um, else doing anything else before you get out on the boat? All right. You had uh, So yes, the, 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 the luxury ship dubbed the Loneliest Island. <laughs> nice. Nice. Um, we drive the uh, we drive the entourage up on board, um, lock it down on the deck, and then um, go out on the harbor. And we will put uh, Snow Bunny and Cipher in the infirmary. Okay. Uh, you get them all set up. Go ahead and uh, give me, uh, if you would, carry just a medicine, and I'll give them a once over before you, you know, as you're as you're setting them up. Sure. I'm going to use my intellect. One, two, three, three successes. Okay. Um, physically, they both seem to be doing as well as you could expect given their wounds. Uh, they both are in, have slipped into uh, deep comas. There's very little uh, brain activity. Oh, that makes my job easy. <laughs> um, so before, right before we depart, um, I'm going to activate all of the jammers um, so that all of the broadcasting glass doesn't give away our location as we go out um, onto the water. Okay. Um, hopefully none of you are seasick or suffer from bouts of claustrophobia. Um, because while we figure out what's going on, we're going to take a bit of a detour. Where are you detouring to? Uh, we're submerging. Okay. Fun. All right, you turn on the submersible, the casing comes over the top, creates a sealed environment, and your boat dives. Dive! <laughs> So uh, there is a um, repurposed former waste facility that the company that my parents used to run uh, that is now defunct and took years to clean out um, that they were using to store um, isotopes and other destructive materials uh, underwater. So we'll be heading there. Is it? Is it isotope free now? It's it's a clean environment. Um, okay. It hasn't been totally refurbished as of yet, but it's the safest place I could think of. And it sounds like, it seems anyway, that any place above ground that is subject to a signal leaves us exposed. So I'd like to put us in a position where if we want to launch any sort of investigation or effort, that we're doing it on our terms. So we'll have access to a hardline connection down there. 
All right. Sounds like a plan. You make your way down to the safe house. Um, what are you doing when you get there, when you get inside? I mean, making sure that, you know, we have some supplies. So I check the kitchen, make sure that there's still food, um, make sure everybody's somewhat comfortable. And then. Yeah, it's probably um, enough to keep you going for like a week down here without any yeah. need for. Um, well, that plus, I mean, like the ship probably has plenty of stuff on it as well. Um, so what's, I guess, what's our next move? I don't know if. Uh, Do we just get back online? Is that is that the play? I mean, then what? Peaches needs a thing, right? Like, even though their her account is reinstated, doesn't she need that loot as well? Or I guess what's the, if, if we get online, what's in our next move online? I guess. Oh, the sure. underwater breathing thing. Yeah, that thing. Um, so it should be pretty easy to acquire enough consumable like water breathing potions to make it worth it. Oh, far out. Um, I mean, you might have to chug them. I don't know if there's any side effects, but I mean, if you grow gills, you grow gills. Yeah, we're fine. Um, okay. No side effects with growing gills, right? We might, um, <laughs> we, we might tank the water breathing potion market for a while, but yeah. I'm sure somebody will make a bundle. <laughs> it's not really in my craft or sphere. So uh, let's, I don't really know if there's any uh, permanent items that we really feel like questing for to try to get you set up. So. If any of you want to make a culture check, you're welcome to. I'm not. I'm happy to pay to win. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's do a... Ooh. No, we're going to give a shot. Let's do some capping. And uh, you may roll whatever attribute you feel, feel is most uh, appropriate with it. I rolled a zero. Excellent. You're not sure where to get uh, water breathing stuff. I think if we just like go and if you kill three things in a row, you have a chance. I think I heard that somewhere. Um, I don't know how true it is or but like it has to be through the same enemy um, is what it has to be. Kiri, did you get any uh, successes on a culture check? No. Okay. Oh, yeah, off uh, the top Peaches, of your head, you don't know. Peaches, I put, um, I put some stats in the chat. These are the uh, IRL outfits that I gave everybody. Oh dang! So dang, you would dang. so you would have one of these. Pop that in a place, just in case Travis decides to shoot us. Which probably will happen. <laughs> All right. Yeah, nothing springs to mind. You can check quest logs and and do searches for them, or you can go in and start asking around if you'd like. Uh, to see if there's a way to get a hold of those items. <clears throat> um, I'll check the auction house and see what the uh, water breathing potion market is and what the duration on them is. <laughs> um, you can get water breathing potions that offer 15 minutes of water breathing for mm -hmm. uh, one gold each. Okay. 15 minutes. You should all have between one and 10 gold right now. Four. How many hours do we need? Four, eight, 12. Let's do, just to be safe, let's go for like four hours of water breathing potions. Okay. Um, so I think my conversion rate for, is like one dot of wealth for three gold. Yes. So I should be able to get 15. Um, so if somebody wants to chip in, Oh, well, I mean, I have another. I can just use one of my actual gold. So let's pick up a uh, sixteen water breathing potions. I don't think I have much in the way of money, but I might have. And I'll put them in. I'll put them in a in a sixteen sixteen slot bag. <laughs> 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 and I will I will mail it to uh, to Peaches. Right. You'll get them when you log in, I guess. All right. All right. Uh, you all go and log in. Chug, 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 chug. Yeah, drink them all. <laughs> Immediately. <laughs> I mean, unless we got something else we got to do here. Paris, you good with this? Yeah. Um, are there weapons? Are you worried about someone coming down here? Yeah. 
Um, so you have a gun or a baseball bat, um, some mace. <laughs> Uh, I, so, um, it, Turk has my gun. Takes the gun from Turk. Uh, be careful where you point that thing. We are underwater. Okay. Don't need you cracking the hull of this place. It's all the same to you. Sure. Uh, tell you what, here, I will give her my jacket. Um, and I will show her where the trigger is for Point Maker, my uh, concealed sleeve knife. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this thanks. Don't cut yourself. It's very sharp. I'll do my best. Don't cut me with it. I don't care what goes on. Okay. <laughs> I guess it's time to play. All right. Oh, we're so screwed. <laughs> you log in and uh, fast travel to the shore. Um, start swimming your way through the Meridian Sea. Uh, as you're making your way across, uh, you can see some fights happening kind of off in the distance. Um, you know, a group of people fighting like fish folk. Some huge tentacled boss that like 40 people are, are fighting right now. But you keep your attention on your quest dead ahead. Are you going to go across the surface until you get to uh, the location where the temple is supposed to be? Or are you going to travel underwater? Chaz wants to go across the sur surface. Uh, Peaches is definitely going to try to go underwater and forget that he's not can't breathe because there's going to be like cool shit under there. Under there. Yeah, like you go down, you start to see like your hit points dropping. Flub glub. Okay, I'll crack just one. <laughs> you crack a potion, your hit points go back up. This headband doesn't match anything that I have. <laughs> we should should I go to get some dyes or something to like fit the transpod. It's fine. So no one's gonna see me down here. You uh, travel for about fifteen minutes. Um, in that fifteen minutes, you're. You see your potion starting to get ready to expire, like the little countdown starts flashing at you, Peaches. Flashing again? Oh, God. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you pop one. And now, as you're taking that potion, you look down and you can see the seal of the Temple of the Spear. Uh, this large, circular uh, seal that's embossed with a symbol that looks like a colossal spear piercing the world. Um, as you get close to it, you see uh, four hook squids come swimming up. Are they hostile? These have very. They have long-reaching <laughs> tentacles and eyes the size of dinner plates. Um, they're dark red in hue and often blend into the deep depths of the ocean. Uh, they rarely venture far beyond the spear gate, but can be seen hunting other aquatic life. Otherwise, they just uh, guard this region and tear up anything that gets nearby. So as they're starting to approach you, they have not gone red yet. What would you like to do? I hang back and make sad faces. <laughs> oh. uh. Do I get my? Did I ever recover my HP? Yeah, you you should be fully recovered. Okay. So early for a fight. <laughs> um, you know, since I'm ready for this, no. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, since I'm like a cloud, can I shape myself to look like an octopus? <laughs> so red like an octopus. Sure. 
I don't think that'll help the situation, but it's just something I feel like I should do at the moment. <laughs> I'll allow it. Yeah, you uh, you throw some wisps out to look tentacly, and that makes some movement. You see one of them sort of look over, and its indicator goes red. The others all go red and turn toward you. Fuck. Start swimming in your direction. Uh, so let's go ahead and have an initiative, why don't we? Glub, glub. I'm so bad at this part. Yep, same thing that happened last time. What is initiative again? <laughs> zero. <laughs> it's not a bush, but uh, it's zero. Let's see. I'm checking to see what players what a player's role for initiative. I just remember it's two dice for me, but it's uh, like athletics, athletics your, or something. It's athletics and your best approach. Gotcha. Yeah. Also oh, three dice for me. Oh dang. Now you count there's a total of four of them. Yeah, still zero. Two. All right. <laughs> One. All right. Uh, so you have the first uh, focus, Peaches. Uh, then they have focus, and then the rest of the team. So what would you like to do, Peaches? Uh, yeah, I'm going to do this uh, swift death thing that I didn't get to use last time. Or maybe I did. I don't remember. I'm going to do it again. Uh, so let me... Swift death sounds very effective at whatever it's supposed to do. Yeah, sounds I very think. quick. Yeah, <laughs> well, that's, I think that's what we need to do right now. We're well, it's not story. like it's not like die die swiftly, right? It's like kill swiftly. I mean, it might be. I don't think I actually read the actual <laughs> okay, description. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Let's go. Is it hair? Uh, cannot find Swift Death. I'm just going to attack it and then try to find it for next turn. Sure. Okay. Um, is that one of your class abilities or is that? Swift Death, yeah. It's uh, an aspect of whatever you call it. I thought it was under. You sure it's not in the character creation chapter? The anima creation chapter? <laughs> Oh no, it's under uh, yeah, anima creation. I think I just t typed it in wrong, poorly. It is actually Oh, no, found it. Uh, let's see. Make two attacks as a mixed action. These attacks must be against two different opponents. Split all successes and enhancements between both opponents. The attacks are basic attacks and can't use any other aspect in this mixed action. Excellent. Yeah, let's uh, see if we can hit multiple of these things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. So how are you dividing it up? So I got, uh, are you kidding me? I got two successes. Okay. So that's one to each, right? Yep. And does your weaponry offer any enhancement? Uh, it might. I got that flaming thing. I don't know if fire works underwater. Sure. Why not? Um, so that adds what, what? how much enhancement to you? I don't think it adds enhancement. It just adds the, um, the tag. It negates, that, like, yeah, it negates armor if they don't have an elemental oh, resistance. Yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. Yeah. So you hit uh, two of them you hit, and uh, slice into them. Uh, they look like they're pretty unhappy with you. Uh, we're going to get two on you. Um, 
and then one on the other two. And they're just basically like going to grope at you um, with their various te tentacles. And you may roll block if you so choose. Aha, uh -huh. to roll block. Does that, does that prevent me from doing something else if I do? Um, I believe you should split your dice pool if you do, but... I've already split my dice pool, so I'm assuming I just can't roll block at all. And let's see. I believe... Second here. Oh, no, you can absolutely uh, roll block, as far as I can tell. So, okay. It's just, if you're not taking a defensive action, you just roll block with no gotcha. approach. That's the difference. So if you split your pool, you can <clears> roll block with, your, with an approach. If you don't, block. All right. So I got a two on the block. If I don't have the block skill, I can't block, right? That is correct. Okay. I can't imagine you don't have the block skill. It's, it's never come up on my sheet anywhere. <laughs> so <laughs> I would check because I think every class gets a block score. All right. Double checking. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised, but. Um... Yeah, I don't see it anywhere. Oh, wait, yep. It's so not not my kind of mage. There is a mage that gets blocked. It's not me. <laughs> Check your. Uh, uh, I do have. Um, I do have an enhancement from armor, though. Then yeah, have that. Okay. Uh, what kind of attack is it? Oh, it's melee attack. Okay. One. Excellent. Uh, they... As they slap at you rather impotently, um, your armor takes the brunt of it. How many successes did you get on your block, Kiri? Oh, shit. Uh... One. Okay. Uh, same thing. They slap rather impotently at your armor. Uh, no damage is dealt. Teach us what you got. Ah, get these things off of me! Uh, two for block. All right. Uh, you, managed, you managed to fend off the aggressions of these as well as they can't quite seem to get a grip on you with their tentacles. Um, who is going to take the next focus from your group? It's got to be Kiri, right? She's ahead of me. Yeah, I got one of my initiative, so. Oh, dear. I'm I'm a shielder, not a fighter. Uh, <laughs> may I give Peaches an ether shield? Yeah, absolutely. Which? Okay, cool. And that... Sorry. Uh, and that does what? Uh, it just says, uh, I, uh, use either shield up med medium, uh, as an ordinary action, I just grant an ally within close range with a shielded condition. Okay, excellent. Teaches you have the shielded condition. Double, um, double health points by armor is what it does. What is... Wait, where do you see that? Um, it's in chapter eight, uh, page 21, under the conditions. Oh, 20, okay, I see. Because I was just reading it, like, from, like, page 48. Okay, cool. 
So uh, that brings us back around, uh, or that brings us to Val. What's Val doing? Um, so I'm going to attempt to clear the squid to puss that is on uh, our healer. Okay. So I am going to point at it with the persuasive ethereal focus of staggering plus one. Excellent. I'm going to blast it in the face. Beautiful. In one of its uh, in one of its uh, saucer-like eyeballs. Go ahead and give me your uh, magic attack. Our difficulty is four. Okay. And just a reminder, you are technically on phase two of a quest right now. Uh, I got five. Um, and that's not counting. So plus status effect plus beam plus one. So eight total. Excellent. You hit it and it um, like splits and a little cloud of ink shoots out of the middle of it, which immediately disperses. And its body Aww. slowly floats down to the bottom. Um, the uh, one that is on your face, however, floats in closer and goes, <laughs> and you apparently have made it very angry. Um, Peaches, it is um. your action. What would you like? <laughs> <laughs> I go, <laughs> <laughs> because I'm underwater and I can't talk. <laughs> <laughs> uh i feel like since i am tanking now i gotta go help my squishies so i'm gonna <laughs> swim over and just get to where i can uh intercept the squid on val and try this whole bloody strike thing All right please tell me what your bu bloody strike does uh make a melee physical attack double the number of extra rolled successes after overcoming the enemy's defense uh if it's on phase two double the number of successes rolled on a physical attack action yes. <laughs> somehow you found somehow you found the black hole fist again it came back <laughs> <laughs> so yeah we're just gonna try to end this quid all right you lunge forward uh sword first into the other squid Ten successes. Nice. Uh, you fly forward and goes, and then like you see a a blade come out of its mouthpiece, and the little ink cloud the legs and falls over. Uh, the two that were on your tail are one's going to strike at you. Each is the other one is going to dive over to Kiri. Um, so you may both roll block. Oh, I got two <laughs> successes, but I don't like Peach's face. Uh, Kira, you swat away the tentacle with very little problem. Uh, Peaches, did you botch? Zero. I didn't botch, but okay. zero successes. All right, cool. Um, it swings at you, and you just manage to move out of the way anyway, as it also got zero successes. Um, that brings us then to uh, Kiri. What would you like to do? Uh, oh, dear. Um, it's this beam thing about magic attack beam. Let me see. Sorry. No, you're fine. I was looking up other things to try and like help people, and then I'm like, oh, nobody needs help right now. Okay. So now I need to figure out what magic attack beam does. Anyway, I just start blasting. It's just like your basic attack. Yeah, it's okay. just a straight up basic attack. I would like to do that with the poor sucker in front of me, I guess. Yeah, go for it. Cool. Give it the pew pew. Pew pew. Pew pew. Just really, okay. No successes. <laughs> All right, you fire, it goes wide. Um, the one who is scrapping with peaches um seems to like start to hang like it's just not moving uh val what would you like to do um, well if it's just going to stand there um i'm gonna swing my disco stick at it 
because that move seems to work. <laughs> and uh, we're not going to waste all of our quest stuff on trash. So, huzzah. Uh, so two plus three, so five. Beautiful. Um, you uh, give it a little bit of love game upside the jaw, and uh, it spits out its ink cloud, its legs curl, falls to the ground. That leaves the one that is very much not glitched, uh, and it is your action, Peaches. Is the, you see the one that is not glitched is definitely making its way for Pom Pom's uh, facial animation anyway. There's not really a face so much as just... <laughs> just uh, all right, let's, uh, let's poke in the soft bit. Since it's a right. squid, that's, that's anywhere. That is anywhere, yeah. It's those pesky hard squids you got to worry about. Right. <laughs> Just those rigid cephalopods. Sounds like a cool punk band name. <laughs> right. <laughs> Crunchy like? squid. <laughs> Crunchy squid and rigid cephalopods are doing a <laughs> show together. Six successes. Oh, yeah. Um, so you uh, just sort of, like, you lunged forward at the one that was on Val, and you just, like, spin around and, like, do this finisher and like stab behind you and take out the one that's uh, like it swims onto your blade as you're <laughs> going up to uh, up to protect pom pom. Um, Tank is fun. Uh, looking beneath you, you see the the gate to the dungeon start to slide open. I will play the uh, Final Fantasy VII victory theme. <laughs> Um, as the gate opens uh, you see there's effectively like a there's like a respawn shrine right on the inside um, I will put my hands in the squid remains to see if there's anything useful inside uh, they each drop one gold and you all may level oh, oh. nice Nice. Let's just put that in magic attack. Actually, you know what? I'm going to buy block. <laughs> <laughs> Good call. I just get to pick one thing, right? So that's how that works. Yep. Yeah, we're buying. We're going to buy block. I have block, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> You're blockings. All right. Anything else you'd like to do before you go? Did everybody else get a chance to level their anima? Mm. We get more health. Oh, no more health. Did you have a question about leveling your anima, Pom Pom? Oh, you? No, I'm good. Okay, Thank you. All right, cool. I think so. Uh, you get inside, the door slams shut behind you, and the res, the res shrine blows for a second. I will, uh, I will give Palm two of the gold that I picked up, and I will look at Peaches and make a face. You're paying off your potions, buddy. Oh, I've already started to collect uh, my gold to pay you back. It might take a few <laughs> years, but like you will get that money back. You're fine. Let's just survive. The bright side <laughs> I'm, I'm is kidding. that this environment seems to have air, so you do not need to rely on water breathing. Yay! Yay! <laughs> the downside is, as you look oh, before you, uh, you see a 10 by 10 hallway that is lit by torches every 30 feet. The walls are covered in slime and moss. And you hear the skittering of untold creatures from below. So here's how this is going to work. This is phase three of the quest. So I'd like to know how each of you is contributing to the effort to uh, clear the rooms, look for the creature that you are seeking. I believe you knew you were looking for a mimic, correct? For a mimic, yeah. Um, uh, and yeah. or and or support the rest of the group. 
to give you an idea of what you're dealing with, uh, this quest, this phase of the quest has a difficulty of four and a complication of seven. Mm. For each complication that goes unresolved, the entire party will suffer one hit point of damage. What? Oh, what? But why, though? <laughs> <laughs> because Man. you have just gone down into the keep on the borderlands. You are in the Temple of Elemental Evil. You are in a place you should not be. <laughs> Man. All right. So we were, so it, based on what we were told, we should be able to bypass quite a bit. So we need to figure out how to do that. Well, so that so that's where my go ahead. If you're uh, there's like you have obviously your roles you can do right, but if there's some tactical things that you want to try doing, such as like if you're gonna try to beat feet instead of get into fights, specifically if you're not, you know, you know what I mean. Like instead of trying to just push your way through, if you're gonna try to like avoid any fights you don't actually need to be in. Um, I would give you some enhancement, probably. Sure. I think um, I'm going to review that message that we got. The previous, the the last thing that she said to you? Yeah, the last clue. Uh, uh, the only... So, the clue that you got at the end of the last one mm -hmm. was, you've beaten the stalker, you must be fierce. This will serve you well where Senestia is pierced. Fret not, the whole dungeon need not be cleared. The key is inside the chest. You should feel. So, you know so it's a mimic, mimic, and you know it's a chest. All right. So, do we know how far things might chase us down here? <laughs> like, are they just going to keep chasing us, or do we think that they might reset everyone? <laughs> <laughs> well, here's the thing: you're in an instanced dungeon now. Uh -huh. So nothing should respawn once you've killed it. And things will probably have like a, a wander radius, right? Where like you, it has chased you too far and now it will turn back to where it's from. Um, you've, you probably don't know what that wander radius is um, yeah. because none of you have ever done this dungeon before. Uh, and the information that's available online about this dungeon is sketchy at best because so many people have claimed to have run it but have no proof that they ever actually did. All right. So my contribution is going to be, I think, unless, and feel free, feel free to have a different here, but if I feel like if we want to try to run to the mimic, we want to try to find this chest, I can do what I can to slow anything that's chasing us, to slow or stop it rather than stop and fight it. That's really all I can do. Okay. Also, do keep in mind, uh, those of you, did I give you your, you have the uh, waterborne helmets, right? Mm -hmm. So you do have, uh, you can pull off the water blast stunt and use that to knock opponents prone. So if you wanted to be able to um, do that during this phase uh i would give you enhancement for you said this is phase three yes okay so i think hmm. like if you wanted to focus on slowing people down you could use jets of water to slow down your opponents is that in conjunction with my thing or is that just do i have to choose you're going to need to choose. You basically get one tactic that you can lay in. All right. You know what? I think I think I have to go with Siphon Power in general. Okay. Um, because, one, it will give me access to positive condition theft. And, two, during phase three um, – oh, wait. No, that's the wrong one. Is it the wrong one? Which one is it that lets me give everybody else enhancement? Wait. Hold on, I'm looking. Never mind. Go back. Sure. Do you know tactically what you want to do, Peaches? I was going to try to be smart, but considering we have, what, seven conditions to like, overcome, I'm going to just do what Peaches do. So I'm just going to run forward like straight, and if anything gets in our way, I'm going to try to hit it to the side 
as we keep running. Excellent. So yeah, it's re resounding horror is what I'd be using. Uh, when making a magic attack, she actually grant the animus enhancement to all allies. Okay. Um, so I'll be lowering the defense of everything um, and using the uh, status effect of my focus, which is staggering and uh, yeah, which is staggering to kind of derpify things. Okay. And uh, how much does that lower the defense of everything? By... Is that based on successes or is that? Well, I'll double checking for you. Say so minus one penalty to the opponent's defense equal to successes. Excellent. Okay. What? I thought it was just one. That's ridiculous. <laughs> Let's do that. Because then I also grant enhancement. Oh. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. So we'll, you know, <laughs> we're gonna think, we're gonna finger cups it. <laughs> it's fine. Right on. And then pom pom, what are you bringing to the party? Oh goodness. <laughs> um. Whew, this it thing can, I just... it can be healing. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Like the only thing I could think of was just get out of healing. <laughs> just keep, just keep us up. <laughs> keep us throwing, just throwing buffs left and right. right. Yeah, um, as best I can. What's this? Uh, sorry, this uh, the exploration guild uh, comes with access of fast travel portal. What's that thing? Do that I have to know you, where we're going? Yeah, you okay. have to know where you're going. No. And that, and that generally doesn't work like inside of a dungeon. That would be like we need to get to the other side of Sinestia. Gotcha um okay so let's have uh peaches do the honors of the first roll please um and you you have a flat enhancement that you're giving well, to everyone correct val or is it based on your role so the it's based on my enhancement right so, so my enhancement enhance right now it's three right so you will have an enhancement yeah. of three on this roll peaches well that's good because i rolled like shit well, don't do that. I mean, it might be too late now. Okay, so I did get three successes on my end. So six in total. All right, excellent. Um, let's get uh, Pom Pom's roll. Uh, let's do shield, right? Sure. And then your chosen approach. All righty. Yeah, two successes. Excellent. Plus the three enhancement from uh, Val. That's five. Far out. Beautiful. Val, drop your dice, please. I got six. Uh, six plus three, so nine. Excellent. So in total, that's aggregate enough to buy off all of your complication and meet the difficulty of the quest. Uh, you run in and... Uh, immediately are uh, assaulted by a group of skeletons. Um, but these skeletons are, are different. They're like, their bones appear to be made out of like onyx. They're just pitch black bones. Um, you take them out relatively quickly, do a quick peek around the room that they're in. There's no chest. Bounce on to the next room where you find a group of those fish folk uh, that seem to be worshiping uh, a idol that they have cobbled together from the armor of fallen adventurers. Um, you're able to zap them pretty quickly uh, with very little ill effect. Uh, Val does take a, a, a hit in the chin during that fight, but uh, Pom Pom is able to patch him right back up. Um, heading into the next room, you find uh, it filled with uh, those hook squids, but they've been beached. Uh, so they're all very, very angry, but not terribly effective in combat. You're going to put them down fairly quickly. Um, Each squids. <laughs> I might take a beat to record like three seconds of footage before we kill them all. That's fair. Just because um, I kind of want to see them do this for a while. <laughs> uh, you do fight a wyvern in one of the caverns, uh, which comes very close to like actually uh, wiping your party. But again, due to judicious uses of healing by Pom Pom, you're able to wrench victory from the claws of defeat. And uh, when you have, when the wyvern hits the ground, you see the chest behind it. Don't open that. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna bite you. 
I, I can hit it. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. It's a it's a mimic, right? So it's yeah. got a mouth. It does. Hey, can you hear me? <laughs> hey, hey, box. We know you're fake. I'm gonna throw something at it. <laughs> like it something opens well. like it so it opens its mouth and starts like chewing at it and lunges forward at you, just chompers and chompers and chompers. Hey, 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 <laughs> hey. I'll try to like dance away from it. Can't you talk? <laughs> I don't think it talks. It doesn't seem to talk. Uh, fine. Drop it. Yeah, do the thing. All right, you blow the rest of your uh, accumulated <laughs> successes into it, and it hits the it hits the ground, cracks open, and a smaller chest falls out of the inside of it with a puddle. The smaller chest um, has a bumper sticker across the top of it that says "Spoilers." And a keyhole that looks distinctly like two fingers. Ah! I could hit it. No! <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's a smaller mimic. <laughs> the best trap! I mean, what's it gonna do? Bite the fingers off? Like, worst oh. case scenario. Those How have fingers. I never thought of that? I'm gonna make a note for Skylands. Hold on. <laughs> Russian the mimic that spits out a smaller mimic. mimic. <laughs> Okay, You're welcome. Sorry. Continue. I want credit for that one. <laughs> uh, I, you got the fingers. Yeah, uh, stick them in. Excellent. <laughs> just got to finger the box. <laughs> uh, you. Uh... <laughs> what? I swear I wasn't trying. Um... <laughs> Twice now. <laughs> You sl slide the fingers into the keyhole, and uh, <clears throat> you feel a click uh, as the box opens. It, cool. it's real. Uh, inside, inside of the box, uh, you see a... Looks like a... Like a white wrapped present. Um, it's bound in red ribbon and there's a red button on the side that says do not push in very bold white letters oh no peaches why why and uh, as soon as that is freed you hear a booming voice you've almost arrived the prize is yours for the taking but you must understand the commitment you're making. Danger and death are your certain fate. So you can back out now. It isn't too late. But if you've got the courage, the key's in your hands. Your answer awaits in the shadow lands. So go ahead. Give that big red button a smack. I'll see you outside. I'll be waiting out back. I just stare at the box. <laughs> <laughs> So as your characters are all aware, the Shadowlands is where you go when you're animatized uh, until you run back to your body or until somebody reses you. Oh. I think opting to die right now is not a good idea. Yeah, I'm less inclined to push the button. I still like plan on pushing the button. Not, you don't have to press it right now. The button will still be there. I mean, like we don't know that, though. Can I just like safely tuck it in my cloud sphere. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You inventory it. Thank you. See? Let's get out of here. Yeah. Okay. We don't have to try to complete this dungeon because we don't care. Unless. You start here. I mean, like... no one's. <laughs> I mean, no one's done this dungeon. Right? I mean, like, we, no, we're no. already here. <laughs> <laughs> And I mean, they are stable, right? Like, it would be a waste to turn around now. Dr. Cloud? I'm up for anything. I'm just here for the heels. <laughs> I mean, I, 
I think maybe we got what it takes to clear this place. I'm just saying. I mean, we can at least like see. You know, it's been a it's been a really shit couple days. Okay. <laughs> and if there's no like, <laughs> just be here in the moment. We didn't get to finish the the winter stuff. We didn't get to collect all. You know what? You see, uh, treat ourselves <laughs> down the hallway, about sixty feet. You see like five bricks, like full size, like person sized bricks, fly out of one wall and slam into the other as tentacles come shooting out into the hallway. That looks like a boss fight. Ah. Oh. Hmm. <laughs> I, I power up. Screw it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? <laughs> So we're, we're getting the win out. today. <laughs> <laughs> Tired of losing. All right. Uh, you run up on the boss. Um, let's have each of you. We're again going to treat this as a phase three uh, quest action. Uh, your difficulty is going to be seven. Nice. Your complication is going to be six. And any failed, uh, any complications you fail to resolve will uh, result in um, health levels lost. Okay. So I feel like at this point I have to use my best approach, best yeah. ability, right? So I can't use siphon anymore. Sorry. Yeah, it comes, as it comes moving <laughs> down the hallway towards you, you see it's like every like foot that it moves forward and other tentacle unfurls it's just this giant ball of like slimy long arms you see like two vaguely eye shaped uh glowing sort of a sickly green um orbs in the center of the tentacle mass but okay i know what i'm doing and as it approaches it says you want to save Cypher, don't you? <laughs> you want to clear the dungeon, don't you? You I can't! You can't! <laughs> As it runs Jesus. up towards you. This is beautiful voice acting. <laughs> I love it so much. Thank you. Cool. Are you all ready for this? Yeah. Yeah. All right, what you got? Um, so I'm going to be using, now I'm actually, I'm going to use Siphon Power. Um, so for phase three, it's gain enhancement on a magical attack action equal to the anima's magic attack skill rating. So I will, for this roll, I'll have seven enhancement. Okay. Um, Siphon allows to, for stealing of one positive condition affecting the enemy and applying it to the anima if there is one. Okay. Um, so there's that. There's power transfer, which is as a stunt on the attack, spend two successes to transfer a negative condition from the anima onto the enemy. And there's mimic, which is as a stunt, spend two successes to denote a single power that the opponent has used in this scene. And it says, I may use that power on my next action. So if I have to, I'll burn on any of those things. But I'm okay. going to start with just the siphon. Right. And then I guess as the fight progresses, if I if it does something cool, I'll steal it and throw it in its face. If it gives us a negative impact, if it gives us a negative effect, I'll try to pass it back to it. Um, and if it throw, if it buffs itself, I'm going to steal it. All right, drop them dice. Uh, how are we doing on momentum? Uh, you can spend for extra dice if you want. How much you got? You got uh, you spent four. And you started with four. Uh, you failed two dice rolls, so um, you have two. In total. Can I borrow one? And that's just one to. Uh, I can spend that to reroll failed dice, right? That's the that's what it's you, for. You can add, uh, or you can add if you spend beforehand. You can add to your pool. Yeah, I'd rather just, I would rather just I would rather just burn it to reroll. Um, so yeah, it's fine. 
So I think I get more more bang for that for sure. So six plus seven is thirteen. Excellent. Um, and you said difficulty was what? Difficulty was seven. You have complication of six. That's thirteen. Oh. So the rest of you can still roll, and then you can start buying stunts. That'll apply to the next phase, if there is a next okay. phase. Yeah, I'll just, I'll just, I'll burn it all up to eat up the complications and difficulty, so that everybody else can just kind of pile on. All right, what are you throwing into the party, Pom Pom? Uh, I was going to do weekend on this thing. Excellent. That's a uh, magic attack roll? Looks like it. Reduce the difficulty of the phase by half the animal's magical magic, yeah, magical attack skill rating. Oh, wow, yeah. So you don't even need to... That just cuts the difficulty down. What's your magic attack? Three. All right, so it drops difficulty to four. So now you're at a net of three um, extra uh, successes. Cool. Peaches. What do you like to do? I feel really bad for this thing. So oh, no. I'm gonna I'm gonna attack, but like I'm not gonna do anything special. I'm just gonna like Oh wow shit. I oh, one, two, three, four, five. Why well, you feel bad for it? That's still <laughs> seven successes. Excellent. We have a total remaining in the pool of ten successes when the creature falls. As a creature falls and sort of turns to goo, you all gain five gold. You all level. And you see a, a loot drop start to form. And then you see a skeletal hand reach down and grab the loot drop. Swing at Don't it. You dare. <laughs> uh, as you like look up the arm, you see it's like a nine foot tall woman in like a Victorian frock coat. And she has all of the curves one would expect from a curvaceous woman of the Victorian period, yet uh, everywhere where it's exposed, it's just skull, just bone. Except for the eyes that burn with a purple flame. It's our loot! <laughs> you recognize this is one of the narrators. This is Mary. Good, I see his volition. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? I said I'm going to use C's volition on the narrator. <laughs> what does C's volition do? Uh, give the character an action they must take on the next action if they attempt to take an action other than that when they suffer a plus one difficulty to take that action the dictated action must be something the character can reasonably do um, but I'm going to use puppet so that opponents who attempt to take an action other than the one dictated with the command suffer a plus two complication to that action if they fail to buy it off they must take the dictated action on their next action and what action are you trying to dictate to one of the narrators drop the oh, loot <laughs> <laughs> Uh, she lifts it up and crushes the box and it dissipates. Whoa, I'm, Mary, what? I'm detecting <laughs> something inaccurate about oh, this God, adventure. Not again. Something I don't have is, a middle feather, but if I could. Something is wrong here. Damn right, narrator stole our loot. <laughs> her head like spins around and her torso then follows and she like pops up to the ceiling and starts crawling across that's you. unnecessary mary just so i know if your eyes go red i'm totally telling he drops down and starts sniffing each of you oh personal space <laughs> <laughs> where is it where's what what do you want There is a totally... magical item here from another realm. Is it I my mean, charming personality? We do, <laughs> we do a lot of adventuring. We 
aren't just carrying stuff from the under baron it's oh. not something that's supposed to be you know. question for the uh for the storyteller yes i'm assuming there's some sort of like tell system i can do to to whisper pom pom right absolutely excellent <laughs> i'm just going to whisper pom pom push a button and then i will say i it might be me i got accused of doing something but it's fine you can check out my character everything should be squared away she walks over and like <laughs> runs her finger bones across her teeth <laughs> and then like just jams her hand like up <laughs> under your fucking like solar plexus and starts like reaching around inside of you uh, Horrible touch. You push the button. Um, every animo within the dungeon uh, suffers 20 hit points of damage. <laughs> Still better than what was happening. <laughs> Avenge me! <laughs> uh, you're all standing at the red shrine. Is Mary here? Not yet, but you hear some howling down in the hallway. Oh, shit. <laughs> 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 Not as effective as I thought it would be. <laughs> uh, we should we should move. Yeah, let's not, <laughs> let's not be here. Are you Where do you guys deeper we're... in the dungeon, or are you gonna go outside? We're Which supposed to be. Whichever way is opposite, Mary. <laughs> well, she said meet us outside, right? So we should go outside. Dead. Why not? We got the loot. We came for it. maybe not the right loot. Mary. Just fucking Mary. We're not done. <laughs> <laughs> this shit ain't over. <laughs> Run the other way. <laughs> All right. Uh, so you come running out and uh, start circling around the outside of the gate. Um, I would like you all to uh, give me just uh, your favorite, your, 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 Best approach, and uh, what skills have you got? You got any dungeoneering or uh, I've got lore? I, lore is good. Arcana or Arcana. Okay. Now let's do a lore and uh, your favorite approach. Okay. You have a complication of four. <laughs> yeah. Because people are looking. Two. So two. I guess I'll buy off one complication and get one, right? All right. Kiri? Nothing. Excellent. Peaches, People looking at me, I mean. I also have what? one lore, and I'm pretty good at forceful approach. Well, the bright side is, is you're still carrying a pack of successes from uh, that are unspent from. Oh uh, yes. Cool. Oh, does that count? Nice. Yeah. Okay. Well, on the same quest. Whew. Uh, you burn through the complications. You're able to duck, bob, and weave, and lose Mary as she comes out sniffing around. Uh, is, she, is she at least dead? No. <laughs> Doesn't even seem like it hurt her anima. If it did, she's fine now. We'll fight she, you IRL. Uh, see, she like pulls out a wand, taps the um, entrance to the dungeon, dungeon locks. There's a bright flash of light, and then the dungeon on. All right. However, as you're all digging around looking for a place to hide, uh, you see a like a dodecahedron buried about two-thirds of the way in the sand, right by where you're laying, Pom. Like, as you, like, hit the deck as Mary comes out. Like, it's, like, right in front of you. So I can poke it? Yeah, it's a 12-sided box. Mm -hmm. There are three handles sticking out of it. Hey, look at this, guys. And, uh... <laughs> 
it says uh, spoilers on the front. Is there another button on this one? No. Sweet. <laughs> is it like a box? How big is it? Uh, it's probably about yay. It's big okay. enough that the, the handles are poking out in three different directions, so you could theoretically each all three of you could, each could grab one. Oh, this looks like a trip. <laughs> Teamwork. Yeah, sure. We already had one. Today's the day. Of gonna why do, not? They're going to kill us again. <laughs> All right. You grab, uh, grab the grab a handle. You each grab a handle. I need each of you to go ahead and give me an enigma roll, uh, using your traits, not your animus. And if we have nothing in an enigma, enigma, enigmas, uh, you can also yeah. use uh, use technology, I suppose, um, or you can just roll and attribute. Yeah, I'll, I'll go with technology. I actually have a little bit of that, thankfully. Three. You recognize uh, Val. Did you get any successes on that, Peaches or Pom Pom? I got. I'm on a string of tens here. Oh, nice. Uh, three. Okay. You, the two of you, recognize just the slightest shift in the environment. Um, that indicates two things to you. One, as soon as the three of you all touch those handles, uh, you went into an instance, which, as far as you know, don't exist in the. Um, Shadowed land. Yeah, we're dead. Uh, secondly, um, the instance you're in is spoiler tagged. So effectively what that means is somebody would have to happen upon you and then uh, opt into the spoiler to see what's going on. So we're pretty much walled off. Basically, yeah. Because you're also... Someone's trying to keep a very, very deep secret here. Right. Um, once that happens, the uh, dodecahedron starts counting down, and you uh, all sort of watch in horror as the flesh of your animas starts to mold with the handles where you're holding it. <laughs> so you so can't let go, right? We're kind of right, stuck to this correct, thing. Right, that is correct, yes. <laughs> oh, Wait, gross. hold on. Mine am I? We want a teamwork. This is the most extreme teamwork you can get. <laughs> there is a flash of light when it hits zero. And you walk into your bedroom. Not your bedroom, though. It doesn't look familiar. The walls are pink. There's a lot of plushies. Uh, you look over and you look into your reflection and you see you are a cipher. And you're hearing a voice over and over again, though your lips aren't moving. But it's Cypher's voice. And it's repeating, it's okay, you've rehearsed this. You're okay, you've rehearsed this. It's okay, you've rehearsed this. Okay, you've rehearsed this. You sit down at the vanity in front of the makeup mirror. You reach over and click a button. Big smile. You see a projection of yourself move forward into your field of view that is moving along with your body, but it is speaking, and it is very bubbly. It's making the same motions you are, but it's doing all the talking. However, its voice reads very low, like you can barely hear it, like there's a monitor that's turned down super low. And that monitor, you can hear some, basically it sounds like, what is it she says? Hold on. Morning, minions. Who's ready to slay the day? Okay, me neither, but we can fix that. How about you get ready with me? But while she's saying that, her face is like weary and dead and tired. 
she does pick up makeup and she starts applying the makeup. And you can see that the reflection is doing it while speaking. And then clearer, you hear a voice again in your mind. It says, okay, if you've accessed this memory, I'm probably dead or worse. Something has been taking streamers. I'm not sure who, where, or what it comes from. But I think I've gotten a very important. A rogue anima, potion vendor in the Martaheim jungle attacked me. At first I thought I was toast. I had permadeath on and he had me on the ropes, but then he just glitched out. So I copied his code while he was glitched. He's saved within a subroutine in this memory. The password is myoclonic twitch, and you'll find it on the bed. I would recommend letting him loose in a closed system. Maybe you can get some information out of it. I was going to take it to a friend in the Ghost Wolves, a guy named Lenny Liger. When I got to his place, he was dead. And you can feel wetness pooling up on your tear ducts and then your eyes tighten as you pull your tears back in. I'm terrified we've stumbled onto something big. I don't know if it's Fulgertech, the FSA, Expanse, or even the narrators behind this. But it's getting people killed. Find out why. Consider it my dying wish. She blinks a couple times, straightens out her makeup under her eyeliner, and goes into a big smile and slaps the table. Says, that's it. Now you're ready to rock both worlds, Cascade and Synestia, with your hot new look provided by Victory Cosmetics. See you on the battlefield. And she gets up and turns and walks out. As soon as you hit the door frame, the memory ends and you all let go of the dodecahedron. You got the file palm? Mm. You have the file? Yeah, right, yeah. Uh, you all, as far as you Thanks. can tell, have that memory now installed in you. We should go. Yeah. I just log out. All right. You get Look a my body later. You get a warning. <laughs> like you're currently dead. Are you certain you wish to log out? <laughs> <laughs> You'll gain no XP for my... the fi for the final quest. <laughs> Look at my hand, jerk. Uh, I mean, do we care? I thought. I think we're bugged anyway, right? Yeah, I log out. <laughs> right. The rest of you logging out as well? Yeah, I'm not going back with Mary. <laughs> <laughs> Creepy ass Mary. <laughs> Creepy bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> She's on my list. <laughs> Mary IRL. I'm going to write it in lipstick on my mirror. <laughs> well, Point of point of order and clarification. You're well aware the narrators aren't don't aren't IRL. Somebody made her. <laughs> uh, the narrators are in fact AIs. Uh, she's she's somebody's fapping material. I don't care who they are. Somebody with a, somebody with a Skeletor fetish. <laughs> somebody will pay. Uh huh. Um. Yeah, when I log out, I will take a breath and then I will go, I guess, I will check out Cypher. She's just laying there comatose as, as she was. Uh, what are Pom Pom and Peaches doing when you when you log back out? I search for a drink. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's yeah. plenty around. Uh, you looking for something water or something stiff? 
Sound like stiff place. <laughs> Do you have booze check there? The web, check, check the wet bar on the ship. There's plenty. It's a luxury clean. It's a luxury creature. <laughs> Get as I take the most to. expensive one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Crystal. <laughs> By all means, doctor, feel free to self-medicate. You've earned it. <laughs> uh, Paris is like Cypher's buddy, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, I'm going to just go hang out with Paris. Just be like super nice to him. Just, hey, how you, tell me about your day. Just like really nice to him. <laughs> He's like, what? what? Who, who are you? Oh, I, uh, that's, that's neither here nor there. Um, you know, I'm, I'm friends with everyone here and, you know, I just want to like, I haven't met you. So I just want to meet, you know, just kind of talk and you know, see how you're doing. You know, it's not, not the best day, but. Um, yeah, my friend is, uh, missing half of her face and doesn't yeah. look like she's going to get better. So not great. Yeah. And I'm in a sub aquatic hideout. With yeah. my ex-boyfriend and his weird friend that is talking to me like nothing wrong is happening and some psychopath who's been walking around all day long uh, with blood on her shoes and a giant hole in her shirt. Um, is that Kiri? Yeah, that is. And no, I'm I mean, to be fair, I've got great. a great set of clothes. But... <laughs> no, not great. Uh, that's how my day's going. I just want to keep up that toxic positivity because the only other thing I could do is actually tell her what's going on. And we don't want to do that. So there's only one option to do. Actually, just pretend like everything is fine. Actually, I have a promise to keep. So um, after checking on Cypher, I will, uh, I guess, make my way back to Peaches and Paris. Um, I'll probably take in the scene for a bit because <laughs> like, I know that she's going to have to talk to him at some point anyway. Um, and I will, uh, I'll sit down. Um, look, Cypher knew something was going on and uh, she didn't know exactly what, but it was essentially her final wish as she put it, um, that we figure out what's happening and why and who's responsible. You had to go through all that to find that out? We have the information that she, that this happened to her for. Great, what is um, it? It's a file that we have to utilize. We have to open it in a closed system so that it doesn't leak out um, so that we can actually assess it. But um, we're taking a little bit of a mental break because well, it's been a very trying day and uh, we're just taking a beat before we crack open another part of this mystery. Trying and I don't know that I don't know that any of us have rested since this started. Okay. Okay. What can what what can I do to make this you, you need how are you, did it upload to your glass or something or like what? Like as far as I can tell we each have a file, yeah. Okay. We're in lockdown down here. If we want to, this would be a good place for us to open it up. But I want to make sure that we're all ready when we have to. Who knows what this thing's going to do. Last time we got attacked by one of these bugged creatures, it locked Peaches out of the system, decimated his anima. We're going to have to do this right. Uh, you have a, you have some computers down here, something I could cobble together like a, like a server okay. clone. Like I said, there's a, there's a hardwired opnet connection here. If we need to utilize it, sure. But you don't. You said a closed system, right? You have right. something we can so pull the, offline that I can build a build you a room in. Well, sure. Like that's what I'm saying. Like you could just the hard line's not active right now. If we want to use it, we'll use it. But right now, we're not online. Well, if she said a closed system, I think we should physically break that connection before we try to. Sure. Um, the offices are right there. You'll find um, the uh, the tortoises. I'll go work on that. Box out. And uh, that's Peaches, by the way. Hi. 
Paris Beaches. is oh, a this great is, name. This is the one that I'm supposed is, to. Yes, yes. We'll talk about it later. <laughs> Awkward. He's amazing. <laughs> You know, both of you have. <laughs> remember, remember. She okay. walks off. Turn on your heart light, honey. <laughs> <laughs> all right. What would you all like to do? Peaches, you want to know what's great about owning your own underwater base? What? I take out a cigar. You can smoke in it. <laughs> <laughs> Works for me. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> I offer Peaches a cigar. Peaches has never had one, but he, he likes how it looks. Yeah. Can't believe the narrator took our damn flute. <laughs> right? Like, we got through that thing, and there was that part where, like, that tentacle, like, grabbed me, and then you shot it off, and we, like, came back, and then Mary comes out of nowhere and just... <sighs> what if that wasn't Mary? Because, like, Mary wouldn't do that, right? What if that was, like, a clone of Mary, and we were supposed to actually fight it. Look, we got out what we needed to do. Uh, I don't know. We died. No matter what, we're dead. So it doesn't really matter. We can't, we did die, we can't yeah. fight it for dead. We pressed the button. Where's Doctor? <laughs> 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 is, that mu- is that music? What am I doing? <laughs> I didn't know the doc liked EDM. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I think I, what? I think I like <laughs> visited her one time in her office. She was like doing that like cats and boots and boots and cats thing. <laughs> <laughs> as long as she's not going to work on the patients. Uh, you know what? I'm going to, I think I'm just going to relax until I doze off. That sounds like a great idea. Excellent. I think, I think Anthony needs a nap. Does Peaches want to do anything before? Uh, uh, Peaches is going to write letters okay. to some of his, the orphans. Excellent. Yeah, that's all. What sort of letters? Um, just like words of encouragement. Um, I, I assume they don't know that like big brothers and sister just got like walked over um so i want to like build up their self-esteem as much as they can before they get this news like oh yeah by the way the world is still awful and you can just die (laughs) (laughs) all right um why don't you go ahead and make a let's say persuasion roll uh or empathy if that's better for you um and then your attribute of choice go with that see how well you compose these letters all right, that's a good roll for me. Okay, could have been better. We got four. Excellent. It's not bad. It's pretty good. Yeah. Pretty pretty motivating uh, series of letters you've composed. Um, they're well personalized. They should. Uh, bolster these children for the tragedies that they're about to experience um, quite nicely. Uh, While all that's going on, aside from getting drunk and uh, booty shaking, what is the doctor up to? (laughs) Um, I guess uh, uh, I I would like to just go over medical journals and stuff like that, feeling like I missed something, some way to help these patients. Like there's, it's the future. It's going to be a cure for coma, right? (laughs) <laughs> sure. Cure for uh, coma. Go ahead and roll medicine. Uh, you, you can <laughs> add whatever uh, whatever attribute you'd like to that. Is there a hope attribute? There's not, but you can spend. <laughs> there's one momentum left in the pool, um, and you can always use your inspiration for dramatic editing. Like you know, uh, yeah, you can you can huzzah. You, you can buy a eureka moment for like three inspiration. Like uh, here's a big Do shift. It. This You're is what welcome. drunks call a moment of clarity. <laughs> uh, I mean, I got four successes. Um, I don't know if that does anything before I have to edit anything. But... Yeah, four successes is pretty good. Um, so here's what you think might... It's possible um, that... 
So you know that uh, memory swapping is not unusual. Um, it tends to happen uh, with glass users. You can buy, buy memories. Um, you suspect that if you had access to the right technology, mm -hmm. uh, depending on how thorough the memory map is of that sequence that you have saved, um, you might be able to extrapolate enough out of that to repair kind of the, the cognitive damage um, that she's suffering or has suffered from her injury, provided that you could also repair the tissue and provided that you don't like fry the, the memory in the process. Okay. You'd have to reinstall a new glass too, right? You'd have to reinstall a new glass to do so. Hmm. And you'd have to basically upload the memory file that you have. Okay. Um, areas that you're not sure about how it would work. You're not sure. You don't know anything about the security subroutines that she's used to cordon off this other slice of code. Okay. Um, so it's not impossible that jostling it in a way that it wasn't intended to be jostled uh, might not let that code out. Um, it's also not impossible that, you know, you would just fry her brain entirely. Turn. Right. <laughs> Actually upload the shopkeeper instead of Cypher. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know the Dewey Decimal System? <laughs> I write this down for my sober self later. Excellent. You all, you all get some rest. I really don't want to push any further forward without uh, with our, our last party member here. I agree. If that's all right with everyone, I think we'll call it a little bit of an early night. Yeah. Um, I want to make sure that uh, everybody gets their hands in the finale. Uh, any questions, comments, complaints, or concerns about tonight's session? Fuck Mary. <laughs> Fucking Mary. <laughs> That's all. Wear that t-shirt next to you. <laughs> <laughs> so a little bit of systemic pulling back the curtain for you. Um, Oftentimes the narrators will show up if there's like rogue code identified. Um, so that the thing that brought a narrator's attention to you was the, the bomb. Sure. Um, it makes sense. Yeah. The bomb drop. Um, so yeah, you have uh, made quite a bit of, of headway in your investigations. So I guess that means I should hand out some experience points, huh? I think I think you should. Uh, I got any, more shit to buy. Did any of you achieve any short-term aspirations? I moved Cypher. That is one. I take an experience. Would encouraging the pushing of the bomb be justified destruction? Absolutely, yes. You may take it. <laughs> Quite literally, boom. <laughs> And Kiri, failing anything else, if you would like to cash it in, I will. I will assume you broke someone's ribs during that fight, during the uh, <laughs> during the long uh, quest chain. Sure, I broke some squid ribs, right? Oh, well, there were skeletons. <laughs> there were skeletons. Oh, yeah, oh. There's skeletons. There's right. more than enough um, ribs to break. <laughs> all right. So then, uh, you also all get an additional XP for uh, everyone getting a short term. Um, so congratulations. Did anyone get a long-term aspiration? That's up to you. I don't actually know, but my long-term is expand my network of influence to Fulger Tech in the FSA. Uh, not yet. Okay. Soon, TM. Uh, Put my hand up their torsos. Long-term for Peaches? Uh, long-term was help the orphanage. I don't think I have done that just yet. Not quite yet. Long-term for Pompa? No. Okay. Uh, you do all get one point for spending at least half the available momentum, and I, by that I mean all of it. Um, and you have, in fact, reached a story milestone. So 
you got you completed the the quest chain that dropped from uh Saifa's fingers shit's finally over my god <laughs> <laughs> longest quest ever so uh that's four xp for each of you feel free to uh spend them as you would like um and unfortunately because you died before you uh or you you logged out before you respawned uh you will not level up your animas uh any further from finishing it i think i got like two levels out of it right i'm fine with that i'm still mad at mary <laughs> Fuck it. like we were right there it's okay it's okay um i hope you enjoyed uh where things went i hope the the memory upload was a was an enjoyable scene for all of you um and i hope that uh we uh, that everybody has a grand old time next session as we dive into the full implications of what is in all of your heads now yeah, I think it really communicated, like uh, uh, the scene anyway, it really communicated kind of the the, the difference between um, like how someone is projecting into the opnet versus like what's going on with their meat body, you know? Like she doesn't have to talk because it's all it's all neural anyway. So was the, the duality is kind of kind of weird. It was a little, a little dis disconcerting. Like I was uncomfortable, so <laughs> but in a good way. <laughs> Well, good. That was the, um, I mean, and, and the idea being right, like just, I guess, to clarify a little bit of what was going on, she like, normally you can just project like yourself, your meat body doing stuff. She had built a routine to run, um, the project to basically like traveling mat her face yeah, and put the voice in. She pre-recorded everything so that she would be live streaming while thinking this yeah. thing to you because that's the most secure way she could think of to get that information conveyed. Yeah. <laughs> that's pretty awesome. Like that's like next uh, level hacker shit, right? Like <laughs> I mean it's to be to be fair, it also kind of like knowing knowing more than a couple streamers who have like either burnt out or have gotten kind of weighed down by things, it I feel like they don't have the advantage of being able to put on like a fake face. Right. So like their fake face is physically uncomfortable for them to put on. Um, so no, it was it was good. That was that was really well done. So bravo. Thank you. Glad bravo you for that it. scene. Yeah. Glad you dug it. Um, and uh, thank you all for for being here and for joining me in the story. I look forward to sharing the final bits with you all next week. Uh, but in the meantime. I do want to remind everyone to please uh, run over and pick up Anima over on Kickstarter right now. Um, we are fully funded. We did blow past the most recent stretch goal, and we're just under 4K away from unlocking the jumpstart. So that would be super cool if we could unlock that. We got nine days left, so that means that the Kickstarter will still be going next week when we return for the finale of StoryPath showcase trinity continuum anima um let's go ahead and do our outros uh let's start things off if you don't mind with uh peaches go ahead and tell us who you are what you do who you're playing pronouns pronouns uh anything you would like to promote and where we'll next see you online gotcha so hi my name is Chaz. uh he yeah they them um and i'm a phd student who studies like video games and music and storytelling and all that fun fun stuff um, I play Peaches, uh, the kind of Pomeranian looking, very love bug who really has one ass to everything. It used to be, can I hit it? Uh, right now, it is very much in like fuck Mary because like we had that, that was ours. And it was going to be some <laughs> kind of like, I'm still. Um, next time you will see me online, we'll actually be right here tomorrow. I think around the same time where I'll be talking with other yeah. people who had talked through the story path system where we're just going to sit around and like, be the s and have a good time so please be there it's gonna be it's gonna be a riot we're just gonna sit around q a um it's uh gonna be me you hiromi um gilbert and scott from uh from aberrant uh atomic youth just talking oh, nice. about how to run story path uh we'll be taking questions and whatnot uh if anybody has any 
Um, and yeah, just otherwise we'll just be sitting around chilling, talking about all the awesome things about this uh, system, of which there are many. Oh yeah. Yeah, looking forward to it. Dope. Anything else you want to promote? Uh, I think that's it. Sweet. Uh, next up, that brings us to uh, Kiri slash Pom Pom. Please give us your perk. Uh, hey, I am Pesto Mystic playing Kiri slash Pom Pom, uh, that doctor person that's doctory everywhere in the game. <laughs> um, this has been so much fun. Goodness gracious. I'm really excited for next week. <laughs> You can keep going, maybe. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> this has been a blast, and I'm I'm learning a lot just playing with with all you people. So thank you so much for for this opportunity, and I will certainly watch tomorrow night. You and Chaz, I'm excited because I'm yeah. sure I'll have plenty of questions. <laughs> as well. Please come come hit us with all of them. <laughs> and yeah, I mean this has been really been a hoot. I'm glad that you've been able to be here, and uh, I have a funny feeling that tomorrow won't be the last time we're going to be playing together on the channel um so uh yeah no worries there uh and where can people uh find you you said over on your twitch correct yeah twitch and wherever <laughs> i'm sure google has plenty of suggestions all good and it's pesto underscore mystic right yeah sweet and then um that brings us to uh anthony valentino slash val what's uh what you got for us uh, my name is Alex. I'm a, a filthy casual dock diving dog dad and still lifetime subscriber to all games run by Travis and his ability to make lives miserable and sad. Uh, playing <laughs> Anthony Valentino, multi billionaire, philanthropist, entrepreneur, perpetual monologuer, and esports team slave driver. Um, I've had a blast so far. Uh, I appreciate everybody indulging my exceedingly long keynote speech. <laughs> I loved it, um, and uh, in fact, uh, next session you guys can start off with an extra uh, momentum in your pool because that was awesome. Thank you. I um, you yeah, I'm having a whole lot of fun, and uh, I'm really looking forward. I love this crew, and uh, I'm really enjoying the system in the game. So, uh, fingers crossed, we get to keep stuff going. Uh, otherwise, this is Baxter, and he is more awesome than I will ever be. <laughs> Well, Baxter is pretty awesome. And does Baxter have his own Instagram yet? Have you have you? He, he there technically yet? does. He he technically does. I think it's uh, Baxter the Best Boy uh, on IG. Um, I haven't uploaded his most recent dock diving videos, but he did just recently compete uh, and earn his first title. So he is now in the uh, he's in the elite elite bracket of the junior open division because he's too big to be a lap dog by an inch and a half. So. Oh. That's and he topped out 13 and a half feet off the dock on his third Ooh. dive. Wow, good boy! Good boy. Well, on that note, I guess that brings us to me, right? I'm Travis Legg. Uh, he, him, they, them, all are fine. Uh, when I'm not here running games, I'm running games uh, over at Plastic Age Plays. I also write a little bit from time to time. Um, I, I want to remind you again to go pick up Anima on Kickstarter if you haven't yet done so. Um, I think it's five bucks gets you in for access to the to the preview uh, manuscript, and uh, you can start uh, your adventures in Terra Surge just as soon as uh, I think the new the last system update comes out tomorrow. Then maybe there's one more after that. Um, I might be getting ahead of myself. Don't don't take anything I say about time frames without like looking it up too serious. And then um, I also want to remind you all that Assassins is on pre-order over at uh drive through rpg right now it is the trinity continuum oops i suppose i should put book in there huh uh it's trinity continuum core uh the darker side it deals with uh various groups of assassins and uh may very well be making an appearance on story path showcase um so if you've not yet done so please like follow subscribe all that good stuff wherever you might be watching this share it with some friends and uh, go check out Anima on Kickstarter. And we'll see you here tomorrow night at 7 Eastern for the, uh, the Story Path uh, Story Guide Roundtable. Until then, take care of yourselves and each other. Get your shots. And we'll see you soon. Later, everybody. Bye.